بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أبت في الله كنتنوا عن دي قواعد العلمية في رد على المبتدعة uh, We reach the third principle which is a tafriq بين توائف الرافضة وعدم التعميم الأحكام وهذا من عدم مع المخالف نقل قوله بدقة وعدم النسبة نسبة أشياء لا يقول بها إليه that's very important is that uh, the third principle is that to distinguish between uh, the groups of the Rafida uh, meaning the meaning the various Shia groups and that not to be and so he's saying that Shaykh al-Islam took this uh, this is a qaida that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah ta was practicing in that he was he did not generally make all the Shia or all the Rafid the sects the same and did not deal with them all in the same matters and that's from justice and that the 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 ahkam that is applied to them is not the same and and I want to extend that by saying that also even Ahl Bid'ah they tafawit they have different levels and even the individuals from Ahl Bid'ah meaning uh, individuals their scholars compared to their general people are different they're different you don't treat everyone the same you don't say just because someone in your local masjid he makes khuruj with jamaat tablik is not like one of the jamaat tablik scholars you don't treat them the same the one who doesn't know and the one who knows and they are uh, on innovation but rather one you may clarify for them and, ha and have a general uh, a lot more uh, leeway if you will so it's very important to know that Ahl Bid'ah doesn't have the same uh, that you don't deal with anyone the, on the same level you don't deal with the ulama of Ahl Sunnah like you deal with a a, a, a caller just a, a simple da'i and you don't deal with the ulama like you deal with the lay persons everyone has a different level in accordance with their knowledge and their domestic bi sunnah and their adherence to the sunnah of the Prophet and along with that is also reiterating the uh, importance of being just with those people you differ with or those people who differ with the haq that always we're required to be just and so on and so forth and that leads to the next qaida which is very important this is the fourth principle which is a tathbeet fi naql an al mubtadi'a this is so important fala yajuz an yunsaba lil insan ma lam yaqulhu hatta walaw kana mubtadi'an muta maftariyan lil kadhab muhariban li ahl al sunnah hadha is very important that even shaykh al islam this is another principle derived from his books the fourth principle, which is to affirm what was, uh, what you hear about Ahl Bid'ah. And that it is impermissible for a person to claim someone said something. Basically, to lie on someone, uh, even if they're from Ahl Bid'ah, to lie about them and say they did this or they said this. And how many people lie about Ahl Sunnah that are supposed to be Ahl Sunnah? Look at what we see between a lot of Salafis. That they lie. Some people are just pure, they, they should only be known as liars. Their khabr is, they don't have khabr thiqa. They don't, they just, anything they hear, they say, Abu so-and-so said this, so-and-so did this, this one did this, Muhammad Munir said this, uh, Tahir said this, Tahir did this, that, and, and they don't even affirm what actually was a truth. But instead they will lie, and some people openly lie. And even when the truth is presented, they will reject it and still continue to lie, and their fans, and their Facebook followers, and their tweeters will all adhere to what they say as if it's the haq. So the point being, a habit like going back to the sky, the, is that, that no matter what, you must affirm, uh, you know, whatever you hear, khabar that you hear about someone. And the khabar thiqa does not come from even on the YouTube when you see people cutting and pasting. If you see people cutting and pasting and making videos and making, see he did this, and then they put the subtitles and they put, you know, all kind of things to show that someone is on misguidance. It's very important to affirm the truth and not to lie about anyone and that's also from justice and how Shaykh al-Islam and Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala bell this is, was the minhaj of the Salaf al-Salih they weren't liars even if someone was 
Someone who argued and fought Ahl Sunnah, who fights Ahl Sunnah in their books. You still have to be just when you talk about them. You still have to say, oh, Yasser Qadi said this, Nu'man said this, so and so said this, but you cannot lie about them. You cannot lie about them and you need to affirm what they said. Those are just mithal, empty that. Those are examples. The next qaida, the fifth qaida, or the fifth principle that is in this uh, uh, text is Hajar al Mubtadiya wa huwa min bab al Aquba al Shari'iyya. So we're not going to talk in depth about Hijra, uh, about Hajar, but I think we are already aware of the, hopefully, the Ahkam, and there are many durus out there, but this qaida says that when there is Masali, this is the asl here, and we'll bring some of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah's uh, principles out later. That when there is a maslaha, there is a benefit either to the one making hajr of someone or the one being made hajr from, this is what we're looking at. Because everything we do in Islam, it has to have an Islamic benefit. It has to have a benefit. It has to benefit your soul. It has to protect your religion. So, hajr meaning cutting off the salams and not sitting with someone and, and all the other ahkam and masail related to it, it's built upon the masale and the mafasid. An example, say if we have a takfiri and I say, I am not going to give that takfiri salam because his harm, and this is an aquba, because he respects me perhaps, or, uh, you know, and he's affected by my hajr. So if there's an effect of your hajr, it affects that takfiri, and that's going to bring him back to the sunnah, not just affect him, make him more hateful and more hatred towards you, but rather there's mus uh, maslaha. Then if there's benefit for that hajr in that situation, it's gonna bring him closer to the truth, then this is khair, then it's mishroor, it's legislated. Or if by making hajr is going to protect my religion. I feel I'm going to be affected by this takfiri. He's very strong in, in, in text. He's more knowledge than me. He's very strong in the nasus. He's half of the Quran. He's half of the sunnan. And he is going to affect me. Then also hajr can be mashroor in order to protect my religion by staying away from someone who is dangerous, who has some knowledge or who has some shubahat that can affect me. So those are just two examples to show when there's maslaha. There can also be mafsada, and so that's why this mess, this issue is built upon the harms and the benefits. A harmful example, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions an example, I think of the Tartars, that someone uh, was with him, uh, some Muslims, and there was, uh, or Mongols, there were Mongols, and they were drinking alcohol. And then they asked Sheikh al-Islam, why don't you go over to him and, them and command the good and forbid the evil? And he said, you know, basically showing that there's more maslaha by not because if we do that, they will continue to kill the Muslims. Right now they're drunk, they're just laid back, casual, they're in a happy mood. But when we command the good and forbid the evil and they stop drinking, that's when they kill the Muslims more. So there was a greater uh, evil that was prevented from that Alam Rabbani, uh, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, from his uh, understanding and his view, there was a greater benefit by not making inkar, not uh, prohibiting the munkar, that there was a greater munkar which would have been killing Muslims. Okay, so I hope that is uh, that is uh, understood. And as we mentioned, the hadith in the first lesson, the Prophet ﷺ said, "فَإِنَّ مَنْ يَعِيشُ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيْرَةَ إخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرَةٍ فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ the Prophet والسلام, said that uh, it's upon you, uh, whoever lives after me will see many differences. Uh, so it's upon you, my Sunnah and the Sunnah of the rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin, the rightly guided uh, successors meaning Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, wa Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala, anhu majma'een. And that you should cling to it with your molar teeth, meaning cling to the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and cling to the sunnah of the rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin. And then he said, uh, and beware of newly invented matters, for every uh, newly invented matter leads people astray. 
and every going astray leads to the hellfire because that means you're lead, being led away from the path of the Suratullah al Mustaqim, the, the straight path, which is the straight path of Allah Azza wa Jal. And there are so many ahadith and nusus to illustrate that. Uh, uh, that import the importance of adhering to the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and avoiding uh, bid'ah and uh, that which will lead people astray. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Kitab al Karim, "Fil yahdhir al ladina yakhalifun an amrihi and to see bhum fitna, O you see bhum adabun alim." Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah Al Nur. Uh, verse uh, 63 subhanahu wa ta'ala he says uh, then warn against those who uh, go against uh, my my affair uh, uh, who go against go go against my affair or go against the the haq, go against the truth and that they that a fitna will befall them and also also a, a painful torment so meaning by distorting the religion of Islam by going astray from the religion of Islam then this person is uh, guaranteed unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them that they will be uh, that for one they should be warned against and that shows us the hukum of warning against Ahl bid'ah and the people who go astray and also that they are entitled to a painful torment and again if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah yaghfir lahum insha uh, insha yeah uh, uh so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes he will forgive them and if he subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes he will punish them and so those are some of the that is the the principles and we'll talk about some of the text in the next sitting about what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said with regards to each of these principles and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad